Hi everyone, Alex here. Today's cavalry tutorial is all about isometric shapes. I don't know I don't know. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at isometric shapes and how you can use isometric shapes to fake a 3D effect. I thought this would be a really fun tutorial to do. I also thought it'd be a quick one and it's so easy, you're gonna love it. So let me open a brand new scene. I'm going to create three rectangles by Alt or Options clicking the rectangle tool. So one, two, three. Now, there's a few things you can do. You can either manually adjust the scale skew of each of these rectangles to get them to each shape that you need, or you can take the easy route and you can open up the cavalry documentation and download this little script here called isometric i say download it's not download all you have to do is go to this page i will link it on the youtube video description find this here that says isometric the link should take you right to this point and this says create an isometric look based on the SSR 30 degree technique by setting rotation, scale and skew for shapes. Now, before you look at this and go, oh God, scripting. No, you don't have to do any scripting. This is so easy. You're going to love it. All you have to do is scroll down to this bit of script here. There's a little icon here and this says copy. So copy, go down to your Windows Explorer or whatever you're using in Mac OS. And on Windows, I'm going to use Notepad. I'm sure there's an equivalent on Mac. You'll need to just clear out whatever you've got on your Notepad or I'm hoping that you've got a fresh Notepad and literally just paste. So control or command V and this will paste the script that you've just copied. Now quickly return to Cavalry. We're gonna go to the help option at the top of the screen and we're gonna show scripts folder. This will open up the folder and you'll see it says scripts. So open the scripts folder and then go back to your notepad or whatever notes you're taking. Remember the scripts folder and on your new isometric script, just file save as and then save it as isometric.js and that will save it as a javascript but make sure that you're saving that into the scripts folder for cavalry now provided that you've saved all of that correctly if you go back to cavalry and you go to the scripts menu you'll now have a menu called isometric and when you open that or click on it it's going to give you this little pop-up window and it says left top right reset so with that in mind if you select one of your rectangles and then you press top it's made it the top shape of an isometric cube so if we press the left hand shape and press left and the right hand shape and press right we've now got all the sides of an isometric cube hopefully there wasn't too strenuous i'm going to move these into a position where they're useful and now i'm going to select all three and i'm going to reduce the size down to 50 by 50 which you should be able to do so just close this window a second i've got three isometric looking shapes i'm going to enable snapping uh, if you don't have it enabled just enable it i'm gonna i have everything on by default i am a narcissist for that right so now that snapping's on i should be able to or you should be able to just drag each of these so that they fit perfectly cube like but obviously if all sides of the cube are the same color it isn't gonna work so we'll go to swatches i've already got a nice warm gradient set up all you have to do is drag one color onto one second onto the other and third onto the next and now we are 90% of the way there. So what we need to do now is select all three of your shapes and then go Control or Command and G to group it. We're grouping it because there's top level transforms on each of these shapes and these won't be respected if they go into a duplicator as they are. So select the group and then press the duplicate button up in the shelf. Now we need to get the duplicator set up. So load the duplicator into the attribute. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change size mode from fit to step. 
if you want a quick rundown of what that's doing, whenever you create an extra shape in fit, it's created between the width of 200, but that will be the first and last point. So if we expand the X count, they're just created within that sort of distance, those borders there. Now, if we lower that back down to three and then change to step, every time you increase the X, we're maintaining the distance between each cube that's created. So for now, we'll go back down to three and we're going to keep size mode in step. And this is where you're either good at maths and you're going to get this straight away or you're like me and you're just going to manually adjust the width to suit. We want each of the edges of these to touch, but we then also need to invert the height and we're going to want to adjust the pattern offset. And what we're trying to do here is we want these to fit flush within each other. So let's lower the height or sorry, increase the height a bit. That looks about the right height. You're going to want to do this until this is flush anyway so and for me that's a size width of 86.5 height minus 25 and then a pattern offset x of minus 43.3 okay so i'm just going to zoom out and luckily because we've got size mode set to step when we increase count for both the x and y attributes everything is going to maintain those proportions so now we can start looking at the fun stuff on the duplicator we're going to go to deformers and we're going to add a sub mesh deformer load the sub mesh into the attribute editor and at this point you can sort of do whatever you want so if we were to lower scale to about 0.3 ah right we need to change level mode on the sub mesh and we're going to change this to text lines. Basically, all that is, is that when it's on custom, it's moving each shape from within that group individually, whereas we just want to move everything as one block still. So this looks like a pretty cool pattern as it is, but it's not what we want. We need to animate these. So I've set this scale to 0.3, but if we wanted to animate that, we can right click scale at behavior and we go for the old favorite the oscillator on the oscillator we're going to go for a minimum of 0.3 and a maximum of one and when you press play they the cubes start growing and shrinking but it's all happening at the same time which isn't ideal so just go to the stagger and we'll just put like a 2.5 on there and it's getting cool right it's already doing something badass and obviously at this point, if you were to start playing around with Stagger, you could start getting some really cool different results. Just try all sorts of things. This one's pretty cool just because it's they're, they're like growing and shrinking in tandem. It's awesome. Alternatively, though, if we go back on the sub mesh and we zoom out a little bit, we can go to the fall off tab on the sub mesh, right click, add fall off, and we can choose to just affect a small area of the composition. This also gets a bit fun if you go back to the sub mesh and start editing things like position Y and maybe change the rotation to 180. And then now when you move that fall off, everything will rotate and reposition. It's so cool. It's so much fun. The very fact that you can set up something like this so quickly and so easily is just a gift. Anyway, I would love to see what you guys do with this. I'd like to see the things that you're making. As always, let me know, drop a comment, say what you want to see next, what sort of things, are there any motion graphics trends we should try to recreate in Cavalry? And I will do my best to meet those needs. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I don't know.